You always want to be the worst person in the band. You want to have the least ability because you're going to learn the most. I think it only works because you guys are so good at what you do. I can really throw just about anything at any of you and you pull it off. Guys, thanks for your time. The idea, I guess, is that say a few things about what it is that we do. Who are you guys? What do you do? All right, I'm Stefan Houck and I'm a guitar player, singer, and I do a bunch of stuff on YouTube, including with uh, Darren on Sing It Live. I'm Darren Mullen. I'm a music producer. I did gig as a musician for um, most of my life and I built this little man cave under my house and it's a bloody awesome spot. Um, I'm hoping that the videos we're making here are reaching lots of people and everyone's digging it. What was the process for choosing the song and being asked to be involved? I mean, for me, I just get asked by Darren and then get told you kind of, you know, on these parts or whatever, you know, and then sometimes it's in the room. You, Yeah, yeah you can do all of those backing vocals that you haven't been told to learn. Like... <laughs> in the... Don't give up. Yeah. Are you doing anything in there? You don't have to, but if you did it... Don't give up. Yeah. I started to. I realised I'm like, oh yeah, it'd be pretty good. If you get it, yeah. Maybe, maybe do the last one. Yeah, yeah, the last ones. Yeah. Are you making me out to be a little bit too bossy here, or, or is that what you're saying? No, 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 no. It's good. I mean, it's like I wouldn't want to do it if it wasn't something that gets the brain ticking and you know all of that. So, no, nah, it's all good. a really quick um decision actually because we 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 did have another session booked <clears throat> with um with someone else on a, a totally different song who couldn't make it and i didn't have much time at all i gave stefan a text he sent me a message back going yeah i know that song and it sort of happened now well what are you doing wednesday <laughs> deciding that he would do a phil collins song is probably something i've thought about in the past because i'm trying to find that right fit with his voice especially by listening to the songs that he releases on his channel in his own time that he's producing songs that he's personally connected to and that he's taken the time to sing his own way without any direction from some dude like me. And I'm thinking, you know, Phil Collins had the right sort of tone, hard, soft. It's in his range. He's got that little husky edge on the top as well. And this one required some shredding it was perfect fit. So I'm glad that he said yes. Yeah, it was it was an interesting one. When I said, yeah, I know the song, I meant, well, yeah, I've heard it and I like it. I didn't really know it. So I had three days to kind of cram it. It's like when you half know a song, you know how the chorus goes super well, but then the verses, you're like, oh, shit, I've got to remember all the phrasing and all the melody for these verses that just haven't sunk in. So for two days, I was just cramming it, just trying to remember it. We all love cramming. Even myself, I crammed all the keyboard parts. The sounds on the keyboard hadn't actually been done until maybe an hour before you guys rocked up. Cramming is what we do. Yeah. So that's a great segue. What is the preparation process for you? For me, it's the cramming thing, as you said. Usually when I get asked to be involved to do a song, I've usually got maybe five other things that are on my to-do list that I feel like I need to get them out the way first so that I'm a little bit freer in my mind and in my heart. Are you saying that, that, might, that this job isn't that important and, you know, is that what you're saying? Or Glad that you're reading between the lines in such a negative way, Darren. It's a great way <laughs> to live your life. <laughs> That's kind of the, just the way that I work. Like, I, I feel like that I need to just, like, get, stuff out the way then that way yeah. i relax a little bit more and i can really focus it's really crazy how this works now we're all very busy and the same with stefan and all the rest of the guys i mean mario he's in here really quickly does the track and he's racing out leaving the kit i mean you know like these people are very busy and i just can't believe that it works so well because we all are on a shoestring time wise but the prep is a cram for most of us 
um, especially when I'm using young guys like Stefan and yourself, you know, who don't know these earlier sort of 80s songs as well as I do. Um, I know this song because No Jacket Required was a cassette in my Sony Walkman as I was riding my BMX to pump petrol in my job, right, after school. <laughs> I knew all of these songs intimately, knowing that Stefan didn't quite know it like we did, right? Um, he still nailed it and put in the yards. We were sweating in the end. I got the air conditioning and he's going, you know, I forgot to bring a towel. Don't forget to bring a towel. I think it only works because you guys are so good at what you do. I can really throw just about anything at any of you guys and you pull it off. So really, I'm lucky that I know you and you like me and answer my freaking calls, right? <laughs> Nobody knew where to find him. No evidence was found. 24 hours leading up to something. It's basically, I don't listen to anything else if I'm doing a session. So I just focus on that track for the day leading up to it. If it's something I'm familiar with that I already know, that I don't need to worry about it so much. Backstreet Boys, I'm familiar. For me, I'm, I'm a little bit different to maybe some other people that work with this project in terms of that a lot of what I do is based around my interpretation of playing something. I'm not going to be the guy who's going to come in and play someone else's solo note for note. Like, there's other guys that are really good at that. And I feel like for what I'm doing with my YouTube channel and all that, it's more important for me to kind of express things the way that I feel them. And I think people enjoy that, you know, going off of the comments and stuff, people really, you know, there's always going to be one guy who says, oh, that's not the solo that's on the record. It's like, yeah, put the record on. <laughs> Even <laughs> I know? learned that solo. What's wrong with this guy? <laughs> it's like, dude, what, what do you want me to do? You know, so it's, it's, for me, it's, it's definitely more about me expressing myself musically and, and kind of putting my own spin on things. Yeah, I, th I, I would agree. Like, I think that by the nature of us being, you know, you're not Phil Collins and I'm not whatever that guy was that, you know, was Phil Collins's mate. Um, <laughs> you're, not, you're not Glenn Proudfoot. <laughs> I, I, sadly, <laughs> sadly, I am not Glenn Proudfoot. Hi, Glenn. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, you know, it's it's that thing of like, well, okay, well, what do I have to offer? What, how can I, you know, best serve this situation to be able to do something that might have not happened if it had been someone else? Yeah. While we were tracking, were there any challenges? I remember that it took us a little while to kind of get my sound. Um, I, I had a few different guitars in my van and uh, I chose to go the double strat express with you, Stefan, because my strat was the closest one <laughs> that I could reach. <laughs> so he went the scientific approach. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, I, I think the challenge for me was the gated drums. I've never done that before in this room. They've always been open and the original record only had a shaker and kick, snare and toms. There was no hi-hats. So I had to basically gate out things, use a hi-hat mic. bars of do do da da do da, da and I needed people to instantly go, I know this song, crank it up, right? It had to have those gated elements. So my greatest drum sound would not have worked. I had to do something to make it sound like the Phil Collins original. And once I created that from what we had, then I had to lift everyone up to the same muscle that I'd created with drums. So in the end, that was probably the biggest challenge was the bloody song, really, and where I had to take it. But I, I had a great time. I learned lots of stuff. And, um, you know, I hope that everyone loves the mix. I'm never coming back. We heard it cry. And I believe you. For me, it was just dealing with trying to put together a decent vocal performance at that time of the day. Mm, it's too early. Well, I really struggle with that. Like, for me... I don't have a strict warm-up regime that I follow. 
because usually I'll just pick songs on a gig that work with my voice when it's not warm and then work up to my voice being warm. So having to be on, you know, at like 10.30, it's not easy. So I got to a point where my voice was not really warm, but I could kind of get a performance together that was okay. But then you reach a point where you start pushing that voice that isn't warm and it kind of stops working. My voice is starting to not work. Yeah. yeah. Morning pain. voice. I like the sound of pain. One more. Ah! All, right. All right. There's pain and then there's not been able to reach the notes because your voice is going, <laughs> so I had to be careful to not kind of blow it out. All your solos are different. This particular solo, I think, was 24 bars or so. And um, how does that come together in, in your head mentally, the, the solo? Usually my best solos is when I'm not thinking at all. So it's it's more of a zen kind of thing where you basically try and leave your thought processes out of the window because when you start thinking about it, it becomes too rigid and too cognitive. It's not something that's, you know, soulful. So I find that usually my best solos are when I can kind of put that kind of clinical side of my brain to the side and just go right. And usually with a solo that builds, it's something that starts simply and starts with a basic idea and then kind of builds upon that idea, both kind of in terms of amount of notes and dynamics. So the further you move into the solo, the more possibility there is for more notes and the more possibility there is to play harder. Um, if that's the arc that you want to follow. If you want a solo to build, then obviously, you know, you don't want to come straight out of the gate and just try and burn and because then you've got nowhere to go. So I think it's about setting up kind of melodic ideas and then building upon those and, and you know, and then making it more complicated as you, as you go along. But like I said, when those solos happen, it's not a thought process. It's more of a, a natural thing that just happens. So that's why every solo is pretty much completely different. So, and I'm sure there's probably a bunch of people out there that would like to see all the alternate solos that don't make the takes because they're all, they're all completely different, you know? This also comes down to me choosing that take where you're in the Zen too, right? Because a yeah. lot, you know, the pressure of what we do when you're in the room, there's going to be a take chosen and it's generally one of the last three, right? Most of the time it's the last one. And we all know that it might be another guy at the other side of the room that keeps on having trouble with a part yeah. and that we keep on going through. And then you know that you got to do what you just did all over again. Yeah. And you've got to pull it out every time. There's a lot of pressure, right? Mentally, yeah. this is still like you're saying, let go. But what there's a lot of pressure when you're doing this. This is the take. Oh, it's totally. Like you're, there could be better solos, Stefan, that you have done in different takes. That's the thing. There's definitely been that. I know there's at least two tracks, I think, that I played on where the release version, there was another take where the solo was really fucking good and probably better than the one that ended up on there. That's just the nature of things, you know? But the single will live. always... Yeah, well, I'm pretty sure with the track this week that um, the take that we did, that I think it was second to last, where we didn't end up getting through the whole thing. Yeah, we sort uh, of so stopped, was, yeah. There, there was, was a that, stop. that was your fault too, wasn't it? You stopped us. Yeah, no, but you went for it, it as well. Because we, we, both, we both went for it. Yeah, the... yeah, there was an extra verse. Well, extra when he, verse. When it and returns we both, to the verse, we this both is quite kept a long chorusing. song, five minutes, yeah. Yeah. And we, yeah. And we, so we both While we're do... talking about that, I don't want to mention that I went to the verse. <laughs> 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 the solo in that take, I think, was probably better than the one that we ended up using. That one was my but... favourite. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. definitely the best the, the best solo I played that day. But you know, it's just the way things go.
So my question now is how did this turn out? Did it exceed your expectations? Did it do what you wanted it to? For me, I was thinking, oh yeah, this song will be fun, but it, sometimes I've got to be there. And then sometimes I have to hear the mix and then go, ah, oh, now I get it. Yeah, I didn't know what to expect because it was a song that I I didn't know that well. And I was like, well, am I even going to be able to sing this thing? You know, I, I wasn't even sure. And I never sung a Phil Collins song before, so I wasn't even sure how well my voice would translate to doing that stuff. But hearing myself sing that stuff, I, go, I can kind of see why Darren picked a Phil Collins song for me. I think it makes sense in terms of vocal tone and the range and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy with how it's come out. <laughs> He's got a lot of energy and I must admit like where we're at right now is probably just little tiny tonal changes. The vocals, I think we're sitting a little low and getting, cause I like this, this song is loud. Yeah. It's got two guitar players when there's normally one. And this is an overdubbed record. We're doing it live with just a bunch of guys in a basement. And you know, I want it to sound better than the record. There was a time there when I was getting worried only cause I just thought, am I going to bring the fire in what Stefan's vocal sound was to push it, you know, in the end, I, you can compress a vocal till it sounds like it's way too hard and back it off. And I needed to find that equal spot. There's a lot of elements. I mean, when you listen to it, it probably sounds simple, but it was a challenge. I love a challenge though. You know, by the end of the week, I'm generally thinking, Oh, this is one of my best mixes, man. You know, and, um, I, this is just another one of those moments where I just think it's fantastic and um, maybe I will want to listen to it again after listening to it, you know, 10,000 times a week. Yeah, that thing about being able to listen to it again, for me, I walked away from the studio over two days ago. I'm going to sleep at night. I'm in the shower. I'm like, I'm taking the bins out. I'm, you know, whatever. If there's no other song on, I've got Billy. Billy don't, mm, I just, it's just stuck in my head. Yes. My name's not Billy, Grandpa. It's Stan. Damn it, Billy. I've got the guitar part. That, 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 that. Like, I've just been walking around with that the last two days. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I've really tried to go to the edges of bass energy in this song. I don't think I've ever had a song this bassy. And I'm wondering what the percentage of how many people listening are listening with something that can execute that sub information. Because for instance, a lot of people will be listening on their phones or maybe iPad or something like that. You or know, these. Yeah. Oh, there you go. I think that most people are listening on a, on a mobile device. 80%, 70%, yeah. 80%. That's a very high percentage. So I will always play it on my phone, go upstairs, make coffee, just sit it on the bench and crank it out. And I'll test it that way. So hopefully that will um, make a difference. And, you know, there's always an obvious mistake. The guitars or the vocals are wrong. The volumes are wrong, or there's something that's way too loud or some obvious mistake you've made because you just didn't take the time to put it on your phone and listen to it. Yeah. Right. So very important that it sounds great on a mobile device and they're getting better to the speakers in these things are getting great. I heard the Samsung tablet the other day and it just blew me away. I can't believe how great the speakers in these things are getting really, really good. What do you think we have in either our abilities or in our situation that helps us get our result over the line? For me, I'm looking around the room and I'm seeing a lot of gigging experience, a lot of time with their instrument, you know, whether it's this instrument or, you know, whatever yeah. it is. And so I would assume that that's really where it comes down to it. You've got a lot of experience. So hopefully that's inspiring to people to think, okay, oh, well, I better do some practice or better get out there and do some gigs. But Practice with people. It's about listening to other, not only having experience with your own instrument, but also being able to listen and yeah. play along with other people. And then you hear that they're playing along with you 
and giving you rope to expand, right? And it's the more we play together, the more the better it gets too, right? And two guitarists especially, that's why there is rhythm and lead, you know? I mean, in this song, you guys are both playing lead parts. Crafty, you're not playing a solo, but you're playing very important lead parts and on the fly while singing harmonies and stuff like that. They're important bits, you know? So there's still, it's about listening, you know, if people want to practice anything, practice your instrument and get good, but interact with people, give people room when you're playing, you know, don't overplay unless someone gives you that musical permission, that thing where everyone knows it's your turn, right? And the best bands are the best guys who don't need to talk to each other. They just play and they feel it because they know each other musically and that intuition where we're doing the sonic dance together, you know? Oh, I like that. The sonic dance. Cool. <laughs> Stefan, do you have anything to add to that? People probably don't realize, you know, because I'm the, the young, well, probably the youngest person in the band, really. I'm 27, but I've been gigging for 15 years, you know. So I think there's a lot to be said about gigging experience. And I think the best kind of experience you can develop is by continuously putting yourself into situations where you're the worst musician in the room. And you, you you just got so much you can learn from those around you. I think that's the, you know, you always want to be the worst person in the band. You want to have the least ability because you're going to learn the most. So I just continue to try and put myself in positions where I'm, I feel like I'm, I can learn from the, from the people I'm working with and stuff. So. That's cool. That's cool. I like that. It. That's really a good comment, mate. That's awesome. Go check out Sing It Live if you haven't already. But I think most of the people here would be fairly familiar. And if not, uh, I've got some stuff on my YouTube channel. I, I try to put out a video cover most weeks. Obviously, Crafty Music Tips. If you haven't seen the rest of the content on Crafty's channel, you got to check that out because he puts together a lot of good videos with a lot of good advice. So you should check it out. So many of the players and artists are on different socials as well. Not only do we have our own channels with our own stuff on it, we've got... You know, I'm, I've just been throwing some stuff on TikTok. If people um, are looking for us, you know, Google, you know, what's sexy in music and you'll find all our names, really. <laughs> I love it. Cool. No comment. Okay, and rolling. <laughs> <laughs>